Welcome to There Is No Clash. Here at There Is No Clash, we recognize research as an independent force with the power and the authority to challenge the old and construct the new, to create an energy that will further guide logical inquiry and to contribute to intellectual and scientific progress. We don't claim to present the absolute truth, rather to introduce a systematic, critical overview, applying what we refer to as reason, which according to an article in the International Journal of Philosophical Studies, is defined as the capacity of consciously making sense of things, establishing and verifying facts, applying logic, and changing or justifying practices, institutions and beliefs based on new or existing information. Our line of inquiry in this program starts with Miz, the cradle of civilization and the land of mysteries, the land where the the story of Moses and Pharaoh took place. In fact, the story of Moses and Pharaoh is one of the most repeated stories in the Quran, if not the most. According to the Quran, this story takes place in Misr. The Quran narrates what Pharaoh said, Don't I own Misr and these rivers that are running from beneath? Moses also addresses the Israelites and says, Descend to Misr. Where exactly is Miz that is being referred to in the Quran and what are its borders? Is it the current Egypt that we know now with borders from Alexandria in the north to Aswan in the south? Well, the short answer to this question is no. This is actually not what the Quran refers to as the land of Miz, and this is certainly not its borders. Miz means the Nile Valley. Its borders are not just from Alexandria to Aswan. Miz extends from the Mediterranean Sea all the way down to Ethiopia or the Abyssinian Highlands from where the River Nile originates. These countries along this line have always been, across history, one country ruled by one king. Ancient Egyptians, Persians, Ptolemies, Romans, also the Muslim conquests, Rashidi, Umavi, Abbasi, Patimian and Ottoman kingdoms ruled Misra as one country. These recently imposed borderlines that divided Misra to Egypt and Sudan were in place only in 1899 upon instructions from the British colony who were there at the time. This was the first and most dangerous formal division for Misra into a northern country named Egypt and a southern country named Sudan. The word Miz was mentioned five times in the Quran where it came in two different forms. The first without no nation, meaning the homeland where Egyptians used to live. And said this who had bought him from Misra, don't I have the reign of Misra, you shall enter Misra. Also in another form with no nation, you shall descend to Misran, meaning the civilized city. The reference to this civilized land or the civilization of the Nile Valley as mentioned in the Quran refers to the land of Egypt, Sudan, up until the Abyssinian highlands, not just Egypt. So let's try to connect the dots here. If the Valley of the Nile, or Misra, that is mentioned in the Quran covers all this land long before the British conquest and its border definition in 1899, then where exactly in Mis has been the location of Moses and the Pharaoh's story? Has it been in the north of Mis towards today's Egypt, as was taught to us in the history books, or towards the south, currently known as Sudan? The Quran identifies the geographic location of the interactions between Moses and Pharaoh with extreme specificity, leaving no room for doubt. In fact, the Quran mentions five descriptions in its narration of Moses and Pharaoh's story. The western side, Yam, Madyun, Torwa and the Tor. The western side, the first location identified by the Quran, is where Moses learned from God that the confrontation with Pharaoh and his army is over. He also learned the timing of his escape with the Israelites from the tyranny of the Pharaoh. This specific location is identified as the western side of Mecca because God said to Prophet Muhammad, and you weren't, O Muhammad, by the western side as we handled the situation with Moses and you weren't one of the witnesses. Prophet Muhammad lived in Mecca at the time and the western side of Mecca is northern Sudan. If anything, this tells us that the story of Moses and Pharaoh took place in what we now know as northern Sudan, or to be precise, in the southern part of Misra before the 1899 borders. By the way, it's worth noting here that back then there was not the land that is now called North Sudan, it was known as the Nubian Kingdom of Kush. Hence, you can confidently say that Misra was in Egypt, Lower Misra, in addition to Kush, Upper Misra, until now the Abyssinian Highlands. Kush was the home of people of dark skin called the Kushites who built a strong civilization economically, politically and spiritually. In fact, the people of Kush built around 300 pyramids compared to the 60 pyramids built in Lower Myths, Egypt. There were always disputes between Upper and Lower Mizr about who would rule Mizr as a whole, and indeed the Nubian Kush or Upper Mizr succeeded sometimes in ruling Mizr as a whole. 
Eventually, the Lower Mirs, Egypt, succeeded afterwards to control the reign of Mirs as a whole. And since the story of Moses and the Pharaoh took place in the current north of Sudan, or in a more accurate description, at the southern part of Mirs before the border division took place in 1899. This then means that the story of Moses and the Pharaoh took place in the land of Cush or in the upper Miz region and that the Pharaoh that was referred to in the Quran is a proper noun for one of the kings of Cush or upper Miz that is currently north of Sudan and not Ramses II, the king of lower Miz, Egypt, as narrated in some history books. In the Quran, Pharaoh says, aren't I the ruler of Miz and these rivers are running beneath me, can't you see? If we refer here to Egypt, Lower Miz, as we know it today, it is only one river, the Nile. Nevertheless, the Quran is referring to Upper Miz, which has many rivers. This again implies that the story of Moses and Pharaoh took place in Upper Miz or Northern Sudan. The river Al Yam, the second location mentioned in Moses and Pharaoh's story, refers to where Pharaoh sunk with his army. Another reference to Al Yam is where Moses' mother sent him afloat in a basket when God ordered her to do so to save him from the soldiers of the Pharaoh. At the beginning of Surat Taha, God says to Moses' mother and put him in the coffin and throw him in Al-Yam, referring her to the river. In the same chapter, towards the end of the story of Moses and Pharaoh, God says, and the Pharaoh and his soldiers followed them, and they've seen from Al-Yam what they've seen. So while we agree that Moses at the beginning of the story was thrown in Al-Yam and the Pharaoh at the end of the story sunk in Al-Yam, we associate two meanings to Al-Yam. We claim that the first Al-Yam is the River Nile and contradict ourselves by saying that the second Al-Yam refers to the Red Sea, where the Pharaoh and his army supposedly met their fate. Wrong. Both instances refer to the river where Moses was left as a child and the place where the Pharaoh and his army sunk beneath the waters. It's clear that Al-Yam in the Quran refers to the same location, which is the River Nile, specifically the part of the Nile in northern Sudan. In fact, the word Yam linguistically means water as a source of life and food, and it was used to refer to the Nile Valley in this region, starting from the fourth cataract to the sixth cataract. This area, Yam, is one of the most fertile areas in the Nile Valley and is now called Shendi Branch, where the Nile starts to become wider and with lower fertile banks. Obviously, you're beginning to question here, what about the verses in Quran that explain Moses crossing the sea and the fatal ending of Pharaoh and his army beneath the waters? The Quran says, And as we parted the sea and we rescued you and sunk Pharaoh and his followers while you were wondering. Let's address this. The Quran was revealed in lesson Arabi, so they understand. Arabs use the word bahra for sea or for any large body of water like oceans, seas, rivers, lakes, etc. For example, in Surat al fakan and he who combined water from both seas, one is fresh and drinkable, and the other is salty and not drinkable, and made between them isthmus and carved rocks. Similarly, and the two seas are not equal. This is fresh and drinkable, and this is salty and not drinkable. The Quran here is clearly referring to the sea as a big body of fresh or salty water, whether it's actually a river or a sea.